Thanks for watching the 13 night team. I'm Ashley Singh. Len Stevens has the night off. The family members of two Virginia Tech students who were killed last year are asking the public to step forward with information. It's been almost a year since Heidi Childs and David Metzler were found shot dead in Caldwell Fields in Montgomery County. Thousands of tips have come in, but none have led to an arrest. Family members hope the anniversary of the murders will lead to a break in the case. They say they've collected almost $70,000 for a reward. Another press conference will be held at the scene of the crime on Monday. If you have any information on this case, you're asked to call the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office at 540-382-2951. The Bedford City Police Department is mourning the loss of one of their officers. Sergeant Boyd Lee Royer, an 11-year veteran with the department, died yesterday after a nearly two-year battle with melanoma. In a department with just 24 sworn officers, everyone is feeling the loss of 43-year-old Sergeant Boyd Royer. When you get to departments have five, 600 officers, you don't really get to know the guys as well. Here we get to know everybody. We end up knowing each other's families. Officer Neil Beltzell says Royer trained him about 10 years ago and that the two were good friends. A lot of the things that I do that people may compliment me on it was really because Sergeant Royer taught me how to do it that way. Royer was diagnosed with the cancer in November 2008. Despite four brain surgeries, chemo and radiation treatments, Royer still showed up to work. Oftentimes we would see him and you could tell that he really felt ill, felt bad, and we'd say, you know, why don't you just go home? And he wouldn't do it. You know, he said, I got a job to do. He simply loved being a police officer. He was very dedicated, obviously. He liked being a cop. Now his chair and desk sit empty, and while the department will eventually find a replacement, Chief Jim Day says there won't be another Royer. You know, I don't think anybody didn't like working with Boyd. Boyd was a good guy. Chief Day says doctors couldn't figure out where Royer's melanoma came from. They say he was diagnosed only after going to the doctor for severe headaches. Royer also served with the Lynchburg Police Department. Our condolences to his family. It's Ashley. Thanks, Sean. State Senator Robert Hurt's office in Chatham was evacuated earlier this afternoon. Police say someone sent a package to the office that contained a suspicious substance. This whole thing started around 11 this morning. Sheriff Mike Taylor says his department had just gone through routine training for an event like this and says although Hurt is running for the 5th District congressional seat, they treat all cases the same. The FBI and U U.S. Postal Service are also investigating the case. Six members of Virginia's congressional delegation have signed a letter questioning the Pentagon's bid to close the Norfolk-based Joint Forces Command. The letter to Defense Secretary Robert Gates, signed by Senators Jim Webb and Mark Warner and other Virginia congressmen, say his recommendation would hurt American combat capability and wreck the economy in Hampton Roads. About 5,000 jobs would be lost in the area. President Obama has come out in favor of allowing a mosque to be built near Ground Zero. Obama says Muslims have the same right to practice their religion as anyone else. He says that includes the right to build a place of worship on private property in Manhattan. Obama had not previously commented on the matter, but brought it up tonight at a dinner celebrating the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. A federal official says a 36-foot-long crack in the upper Big Branch mine floor isn't to blame for an explosion that killed 29 people. Kevin Strickland of the Mine Safety and Health Administration says it isn't venting methane. Massey argues the crack could have allowed a sudden flood of methane gas into the mine, but Strickland says the victim's family shouldn't believe that. He says floor heaving and cracks are common. We have learned tonight that more work remains to be done on the BP oil well. There was talk that a relief well would no longer be necessary, but the president's top man in the Gulf says they won't take any chances. Matt Gutman reports. Vienna. A man is in custody tonight in Roanoke. Police say he's connected to an aggravated assault. 55-year-old Wesley Lamont Peters of Roanoke was arrested and charged with malicious wounding. Officers say they found 58-year-old Alan Lane Harris yesterday at the intersection of 4th Street and Elm Avenue with stabbing wounds. He was transported to the hospital. Peters was found shortly after near the scene. Roanoke police are asking for your help tonight in identifying a suspect in a bank robbery. Officers got to the Wachovia Bank on Jefferson Street this afternoon around 1. They say the, the suspect handed the teller a note demanding money and left with an undisclosed amount. No one was hurt. Anyone with any information on this man, call the Roanoke Police Department at 540-853-5959.
A Virginia police chief says his department is investigating whether the suspect in a three state stabbing spree is responsible for another unsolved death. Police in Leesburg believe Elias Abuelazam attacked three people there. Leesburg Police Chief Joseph Price says police learned the man was in the area in March 2009 when Jamie Lane was stabbed. At one point, Abuelazam lived across the sidewalk from him. If authorities connect him to Lane's death, he could face the death penalty. It was the last Friday Cheers in Lynchburg tonight, and for those of you who pay for the music and food and fun, find out where your money goes. And an SUV accident in Wisconsin wasn't your average wreck. How the driver of this Escalade walked away after falling in a sinkhole.